Welcome to my closet. We're coming up upon the eclipse, the great American eclipse. The other strike up from the one I experienced, which was the one that entered in through the United States, through Oregon, it went out through uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I saw the totality uh, for a full two plus minutes, almost three in um, 2017, August 21st. So we're having this one coming up in April and many of us are having like a total eclipse of the soul. And hence uh, my little talk to you. So pull up a cup of cup of because what's happening right now is I am going to give you this nice tete to tete heart to heart talk well it's one-sided it's a monologue because we're not live i don't do lives um what that means is you are always going to just see me talking to you and i'm not going to interact with you other than through the comment section or any email you send me at ityogaguide at gmail.com also note my comment section doesn't always come through. So YouTube has gotten so big that I don't always get all the comments. And because it's just me, I pay attention. And we're building a, a movement The I get to be me now. I get, you get to be you. You get to be the fullness because you are created and I'm a non-religious person by way of books, but I'm spiritual and I've had my own experiences. So it's not just mind uh, delivery of information, it's experience. And God is real. And uh, we are part of God. And the point of being here is to express the full nature of ourselves. And the point of Satan is to uh, prevent that. And the point of narcissists is to provide Satan a vehicle by which they can prevent people of the light to express themselves. So you're a person of the light. I'm a person of the light. We're delightful. And these narc types have been trying to keep us down. And they've done a really, really good job of it because they were incognito. We didn't know they existed, but now there's a whole language. We know about the love bombing. We know about the cyclic nature of how it is with them, how they put us on a pedestal. They overvalue, then they devalue, and they have this confrontational personality, and you don't know what hits you because you have been trauma bonded or something. Everybody has their own story, and there's a multitude of, uh, videos on it and I have a playlist section look at the one about raised by a narcissistic mother look at the one called the narc male it can apply to women too but I don't know I've only been with men I'm a heterosexual and cheers to that but uh, right now I'm not interested in the relationship at all because I'm having one with myself and also I don't want to be interfered with while I'm growing and I'm sharing the growth because it's coming on really strong and it's magnificent. And we are coming into our own. So I'm wearing amber glasses. They're the best kind to wear uh, at night to prevent your brain from receiving light that messes up its circadian rhythm. So it allows you to fall asleep when it's time. Oh, look, <clears throat> Mardi Gras beads. Yes, these are Mardi Gras beads. Hey, mister, give me some beads. Yeah, this, this is it. This right here, this came from my um, aunt who traveled to uh, the Mideast and worked in Saudi Arabia. I think Abu Dhabi, I'm not sure, but she was uh, a teacher over there and she raked it in. She made bank. She left a million dollars 
to Carlton College, uh, Car Castleton College, Vermont. So uh, she didn't leave it to any of her nieces or nephews. She left it to the college for her own purposes. Castleton College, Vermont. Probably they kept her plaque up for a whole year and then took it down because nobody from her family ever came wondering why. Um, but apparently, I, I think I can probably go there, improve my heritage and get a, a discount, maybe a free scholarship for my to become an educator, a teacher. So you know what? I'm going to look into that for shits and giggles. Yeah, I'm serious. My aunt... My narco mother's sister, her oppressor, actually, Virginia the Battle Axe, she left $1 million so that her name could be put on a plaque to create a wing on a building rather than giving it to her nieces and nephews. I think especially there's a few nieces on her youngest sister's side I'm not talking about me, that really could have used it. Such a shame, these narcs. They give the money to the wrong people. They're such pompous asses, aren't they? <sighs> yep. <laughs> I sure hope my parents leave me some money. I could use it. But you know something? In the meantime, one does have to go. Oh. I lived to be able to see this day, meaning I lived through the narcissistic abuse of being raised by a narcissist, not knowing it, and wondering why I kept attracting these types, learning the language, learning the lingo, hoovering was my downfall, and I became addicted. So it was my fault, but not my fault. I, it was a combination of programming and addiction. Then there's disassociation. Your brain gets messed up. You actually, because of the stress, have a change in brain chemistry. There's a video that I have that if you ask me, can you tell me that video, please send it. In a nutshell, it tells you everything that happened to you. I have it in, in, in a file and I can send it. Um, if you email me at ityogaguide.com, that's IT Yoga Guide. IT is Inner Transformation Yoga Guide. You know, like a tour guide. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> I can't tell you though. On this uh, road to recovery, sometimes I hit some bumps and uh, it's always the same. Allow yourself to go through something. The more you resist, it persists. And then careful of indulgences. It's as easy as that. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. You're going to be human. So you're going to have a day that you feel really happy. And then you're going to have a day that you don't feel so happy. That doesn't make you manic depressive. That doesn't make you bipolar. It makes you human. <clears throat> My goodness. We are so hard on ourselves. Why? Because we had a narc parent. We don't have to be perfect to be loved. We're lovable because God created us. And you know what a matter of fact is? The truth of our being, and I know this for a fact because this is one of my spiritual experiences. People, I had one of those heightened spiritual experiences where you hit nirvana and then you get Shaktipa, which is essentially the Kundalini. Kundalini, woo. That's why, woo. And all up and down the spine. And, whoosh, and I was, I felt like I was shaking. I felt like I was a live wire. And I said to somebody, Is my entire body vibrating? Am I moving? And I felt like I was going like this, but I wasn't. So, ah, 
And in that moment of, of, of heightened ecstasy, I, I was at that high vibe where I knew how difficult this, this earth is. But I also knew that if we keep remembering, <laughs> we have to keep remembering that life really, we are, really are, life really is okay, all right, right now, and everything really is perfect, and that we really do have a connection to God because we are part of God, and our consciousness is a refraction, like the rainbow has all these colors that you don't see unless it's split by a prism, so then that white light becomes bands. And our experience has different wavelengths, highs and lows, just like colors, frequencies, notes. Yeah. But I still allow myself to have my grief because I have a physical body. And therefore, I allow it. I'm now learning how to have more inner authority. People t do give me their two cents worth and it's all taken well. It's all taken in, 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 into account. I ask for it. I welcome it. When it's provided unwelcomed, I, I take it in stride. I want you to, to recognize that I actually now have a really, really close connection to my, like, plugged in and I'm going to continue doing that, developing inner authority, because the inner authority, that inner voice is one of the things that is beaten out of you, literally and figuratively, by a narc parent. In my case, a narcissistic mother who verbally berated me and actually whacked me across the face so hard, several times I still remember I saw stars. Like you're, you, you hear that sound in your head. It's like boing, boing but it's like twangy. Boing. It's your brain hitting, being hit, and by the cranium, and the cerebral spinal fluid is the only thing saving you, which is that fluid in between um, that runs up and down the spinal column and is part of the electrochemical nature of our of our bodies. So we are electrochemical as well. We're electromagnetic and um, chemical electric. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it's kind of fun, right? Having this medicine body and, and it's all messed up by these parents that messed you up and then the society that constricts you and how expensive everything is and the demands that are placed on us and the the structures and then we have to then go, okay, how can I create my own system to work within this? And if you come from a narcissistic family, abuse structure, you haven't learned how to create your own foundational system within yourself. And so that's where I'm at, my dear friends. I'm a fledging. I'm flying the nest. I'm leaving everybody else's information for now. Although I tap into it to affirm my own. For instance, I recently realized that you never can have a conversation with a narcissist. Every single time I ever said, hey, we really need to have a discussion about this matter. And the person would have a problem with it. And all three of them did in their own way. And I'm not going to go into it because I don't remember. I don't want to recall it. I will just simply tell you that let's have a talk is kryptonite uh, to a narcissist, which means that not only will it, it won't make them weaker, it will turn them into ballistic, crazy people. <laughs> they just get crazy so fast. I mean, my mom would just hit me like that out of the blue, and I would I would see black and like hear that thwack, that sound in my head, and then I would see the little dots. So when I watch Bugs Bunny and they would do that sledgehammer, you know, the cartoon hammer of one of the characters and the character would go and they would see tweet, 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 tweet or stars. I uh, thought to myself, oh, 
the writers of this comic strip, meaning I knew that writers wrote it, they'd been hit in the head before. So I thought it was normal for your mother to hit you so hard in the head because you said something they didn't like and you're under eight years old. I learned not to say anything. That is really sad. I was like second, third grade or under. That is really sad. I'm just feeling this. See, so that's one of the things that you have to avoid. When you go through your recovery, sometimes you hit something that you suppressed. The brain has a way of protecting you from the trauma. That's where there is a danger to going back into the past. However, if you have a reoccurring pattern in your now, it's affecting your ability to enjoy life, you're going to have to face some of those ugly facts. And those people that go with caution, and the caution is you don't want to get stuck in it. It's like the swamp of despair. You don't want to, like the, like the Bilbo um, Baggins, the Hobbit, the Return of the Ring, whatever. They go into the doom and it's like Harry Potter and those, if you, they make you feel doom. You have to recognize when you're going into the doom and pull yourself up. So it takes a spiritual warrior. And sometimes I fail. So learn about mineral baths, salt baths, take a bath in salt. I need to do this. I need to get an iron um, bracelet. We're going to talk about all of that because in your recovery and in your discovery of yourself, oh, light being, do you not realize that there are dark forces that want you to continue to be dim and small? Do you not realize that they put all this energy into the narcissist? Not only did the narcissist steal energy from you, the narcissist was also receiving energy from the demonic realm. This is my theory. And therefore, trying to keep you down. Do you realize what kind of light being you are? All you have to do is be happy. And that is the biggest revenge. Or, not revenge, we're not looking to revenge. We're not looking to avenge. This is what we're looking to do the narc abuse escapees. Whether you are living with one or not, you've escaped one when you are beyond their reach. And if they're the garden variety and they aren't that bad and you tolerated them for over 20 years and they're not abusing you badly, verbally or physically or poisoning your food or putting their butt on your toothbrush head, no problem. Learn to gray rock. Learn, learn to disconnect. Learn to... Act like you're listening to them when you're not listening to them without being smug. Because there's something about the de demonic force of the narcissist. They know when you're being facetious, solicitous, and duplicitous. Well, they don't know about the duplicitous part because they are. They just know when you're being disingenuous, okay? So be cool, be chill, be aware of what you're dealing with. Now, I don't want to live my life like that. <laughs> you have at it. If you're still living with one, I go out of dodge. But it's not easy, I tell you. It's difficult and it's scary. And it requires a lot of personal resourcefulness, ingenuity, fortitude, and creating a community. And learning, learning to create a community. So it forces one to create community. And it took me a long, long time to be able to do that. Contrary to what your narc parent told you, you're really interesting. You're really valuable. You're a real character, probably. And you're probably a lot of fun to be around. So let's leave off at that. 
I'm in the closet right now because I've been doing a major reorder and cleansing, not a purging, but a reorder and uh, it's been going really well. I finished my kitchen. I created a system uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about that order and organization later, but the major thing is that when you are going through narcissistic abuse recovery, you are going to go through a period of clutter. And the last thing you want to do is give yourself a hard time because God knows you've had enough of a hard time. Be easy on yourself. Take a look at my videos uh, on the playlist, brainstorming for childhood trauma recovery. And I will be filling out more of that and fleshing it out. It's the spiritual kitsungi that I'm really after, really creating an uplifting uh, video series that are um, edited on iMovie through my phone. I, I'm very low tech. Uh, and um, it's my pleasure and privilege to be able to assist others in reclaiming their true nature and living in the light. Peace be with